the bikes, Pepsi, Suzuki, Skull Bandit 500 and Mike's Hybrid RG. We've also got Danny Webb with us. Danny, what's your involvement? I know you've done a lot with the classic TT riding some of these, but not these, but RG 500s. Where did it all come from, your passion for the 500 two-strokes? Um, I mean, two-strokes, it's come from, you know, I started off racing uh, 125 two-strokes. So that's where the two-stroke side of things have come from. Obviously, the RG, you know, I wasn't alive in Barry's era, but he's a massive icon for British yeah. motorcycle racing. So that's where that, that come from, you know, just watching Barry ride one. Um, and then... The opportunity come when I was at Jerby at the Classic TT. I don't actually think I was riding for Steve Wheatman at the time, but he offered uh, for me to ride Barry's, I think it was his 74 bike oh. um, around Jerby in the parade. And, and yeah, I rode it and, and even that was a massive, a massive tick. Um, and that's where it started. Steve rode, see me ride there. And then the year after um, Lee Johnson got, got injured um, he was riding in the classic Suzuki XR69 um, and I've replaced him. So that's where my relationship there with classic Suzuki started. Um, and, and then, yeah, then Steve had the idea of uh, riding the RG500 and, and I was sort of the only rider which, which sprung to mind what, what could ride it and was little enough to get on one. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we just, we, we went from there and you know they're just a, they're just a fantastic motorbike and they just draw so much attention like the classic tt when we started the the rg up the the crowds of people around it it got so much love and yeah. um yeah it, it's definitely it's it's a massive career highlight of mine um and then being able to ride barry's actually champ 76 championship winning bike i'd have never have dreamt that that i'd ever get be able to do that so um yeah. So your days at the TT are finished, you've decided to throw in the towel, you're not going back again. So what's, what's next for you? Um, I mean, I'm doing world endurance this year. Uh, you know, I thoroughly enjoy that. I'm in a great team um, and the environment in the team is fantastic. I've got my own GP camps for younger riders to try and bring them on and try and advance them before they get to the, the stage of sort of 13, 14 year olds when because that's where the Spanish kids and Italians yeah. have the leg up yeah. on us. This is like a mini VR46 type. Oh, uh, yeah, almost. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, I can't afford to do it for free. <laughs> but, but, yeah. um, but, you know, we, we're trying yeah. to. We're just Fantastic. trying to educate yeah. them. Um, and and obviously, Petrol Revolt, you know, we, we do, we've got our own YouTube channel. It's not it's not the same as yours. It's We're doing a bit of a different angle, yeah. cars and bikes. And it, It's well worth having a look at their channel. I'll put some links in the description. You've got some really good videos on the history of the RG, the history of the Hayabusa as well. You I mean, you're quite a, a young channel, aren't you, all, all things considered, but well worth a look. So uh, if you want to know more about the Mike's bikes, have a look at the link below and have a check it out. Yes, and that's that. We're just trying to make a a, a petrol community. You know, yeah. we love we're petrol heads. Um, I'm a petrol head through and through. So is Mike. So we're trying to make a petrol community. Um, so we are we're doing exclusive um, petrol vault track days as well in Spain. Oh. Um, you know, low numbers, but um, everyone gets the opportunity to ride their bike on the circuit and not worry about someone firing up the inside of them. You know, they can just go and enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the circuit. With with the numbers we're looking at they'll be lucky if they see another bike on circuit sort of thing. Yeah. Um, of course, you probably will, but you know, that, that's sort of what we want, you know, yeah. just to give people that, that feel of freedom that they can enjoy their pride and joy um, and, and in a in good environment. Well, Mike, sounds like I might have to join you on one of these. I, th I think <laughs> it you sounds were. fantastic. Mind you, we've got like Spanish sun here we're today. We're not doing too bad today. But, uh, yeah, but you know, it's, that, that's what we want to do. And like I said, with the hospitality, everything will be there for them uh, on hand. They haven't got to worry about a thing and, and just enjoy themselves. Yeah, that no, sounds brilliant. So the time has finally come for me to get my grubby little mitts on Mike's RG500, my absolute dream machine. This is a dream come true. So here we go, <clears throat> dream bike. It is that time when I'm gonna meet one of my heroes. You know, I've always loved two strokes. I've had KL1, KL1 S's, TZR 250s, even 125, you know, but I've never ridden a 500cc two stroke. I've never ridden an RG, I don't think, even like the 250. So this, this bike 
is up there you know this this to me is one of the ultimate motorcycles of all time of all time i know you know i know it's not going to be anything like a modern bike you know it's not but this is all about the theater i mean I, the reason i love my h2 is because of the theater the noise the drama you know and this just takes it to another level so uh should i start it up mike yeah. kick start obviously so uh here we go here we go sitting on it <laughs> it feels so thin kick stand up Oh, blimey, that's quite high up, isn't it? All right, so on. God, I can't even get my leg up enough. Throttle or not throttle? It's obviously a technique to this. That's not a good start. I can't even start it alone, ride it. It's all in the technique, which obviously I don't have. Oh, listen. Four cylinder, separate cylinder, obviously four separate exhaust pipes. Now, of course, these things are all about the power band. Mike warns me that these don't go around corners. The brakes don't feel very strong. You've got to warm them up, obviously these are cold. You've got to slowly warm these things up. <laughs> this, is, this is a dream come true. I can't thank Mike enough. This is a dream come true. Plumes of smoke behind me. Oh, listen to it. Brakes. Yeah, that front brake is awful. Absolutely awful. Oh my word. Yeah, that's a terrible, terrible front brake. Rear brake. Rear brake's not bad. Well, you've got to keep it sort of buzzing a bit. Power band is about 7,000 RPM. You've got to warm it up though. You know, the first couple of times you go through the power band, Mike says, you know, don't go mad with it. Because this is a 575, so this is not even a standard RG, this is tuned. This is a big bore 575, ported carbs, um, custom exhaust. This is 120 horsepower. From the factory, these were 90 at the crank, and Mike says that's optimistic. They're more, they were more like 70 at the crank. This is 120 at the back wheel, and it weighs about 145 kilos. So it's lighter, well it's about the same weight as my 690, my 690 Supermoto. <laughs> and it's got 120 horsepower. And it's got shit brakes. How's it going in a corner? Yeah. Not very well. Mike said it's all about getting your speed set before you hit the corner. So get yourself at the speed and flow around the corner. God, that front brake is really rather nasty, really horrible. It's surprisingly nice to ride. The brakes are terrible, but the position on the bike, the feel from the bike, it's surprisingly nice to ride. I thought it might be a real pig. The clutch is quite heavy, but it's it's bearable. There is a good. TMF will be happy. That Pepsi is all the, the original bike. That's all original, that one. 100% original. Mike done a bit of a restoration on it. When I say original, it's still got Mike's tune, of course. It's beautiful, mate. I love it. I love it. Oh, what a thing. What a thing. It's such a shame that you can't buy bikes like this anymore. And it, what, what is a real shame as well, you know, is these... I mean, these bikes are so expensive now. And at the beginning, Mike said he, he bought his first one for 1800 quid. You know, second hand back in the day. These are now, I've looked on eBay, between 17 and 25 grand, depending on the condition. I'd imagine this one, this is Mike's bike he takes on track, you know, this is his, his used one, the one he actually uses on the road a bit more, rather than a collector's piece, because he likes to use them. Woohoohoohoohoo! <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, the sound! Oh, I just tickled into the rev band a little bit there, but in high gear, so... <laughs> oh, it's, it's such fun! It's such an experience! It's an experience that you just don't get riding anything than a two-stroke. This is incredible. Absolutely incredible. at a decent pace it's lovely on these sort of big flowing roads I just <laughs> I just don't like going fast on bikes where the brakes are terrible there and I mean proper terrible I mean there's no ABS on this but I don't think you'd ever manage to activate the ABS even if there was see with a two straight you've got to get the revs it, it, it likes to be between five and 10,000 revs, anything below five, and it's flat. What an incredible, incredible thing. I want one. I want one. Let's get it in the power. Watch this car, because I can't stop if he pulls out. Don't do it, mate. Alright, we got a corner now, this is what we've got to be careful. They don't handle bad, I mean, the wheels are tiny on them. The wheels are tiny, 16 inch wheels, tiny little bits. I think it's got a 120 rear tyre, one section rear and a 110 front, it's like adventure bike sizes so it's not bad it's better than I thought it was going to be actually oh that bit of power man <laughs> I love the the blipping and the the theatre of it and ride so much nicer than I was expecting. Two strokes, one of those things you've got to you've got to open them up because they sort of clog up with oil and get horrible, you know. So they like to be thrashed. They like to be opened up to to clear their throats, as it were. I remember that from my old uh, KO1 days. My KO1 never sounded like this. Those four cylinders, those four pipes. It's like a symphony, a symphony of sound. It is wonderful. I think this has just become my best sounding motorcycle of all time. The RSV4 sounds amazing, but I think this has got it. What a dream, what a privilege, what a privilege for mine to let me ride this. Absolutely love it. That's a rather pleasant, isn't it? Nice ride out on RGs. You don't, that's a scene you just don't see going through the countryside yeah. very often, isn't it? They've even bought us the right drinks. Cheers, mate. Pepsis. Was going to get Coke, but it uh, had to be Pepsi, didn't it? I knew it wasn't going to be like a modern bike, obviously. And I had, to, I guess, some preconceptions of what it was going to be like. It's exceeded all of those. It's much. It rides nice, and I thought it was going to be the only thing which I thought was horrible was the brake. Apart from the brake, obviously, yeah. you, you know when you're leaning it, you know the limit of the tyre. It's not going to go over very far. And like you say, you've got to move your weight around a bit, haven't you? Yeah. If you and don't move your steer. weight, you're in big trouble on these. Yeah. But apart from the brakes, you know, to ride it was smooth. Obviously, it's got that power band between sort of five and ten in it. And if you're not in that, you've got there's a lot of knocking down. But that's all. That's part of the fun yeah, of riding, it, isn't it? It's like I need bang bang two gears down. <laughs> I say a reason I love my H2 is because 
you know, the thrill of the ride, the experience, you know, it's an experience to ride it because of the power and the noise of it. That's exactly the same thing. Exactly that same thrill. In some respects, better because you haven't, you know, you, you're not doing 150 mile an hour in second gear. You know, on these you can you yeah. can rev it, you go up through the box, and you're not doing steady speeds, are you? Well, that was the thing when we had the Hayabusa, um, but I only rode that on the road. Danny rode it on the track, but. When you ride it on the road and you pin the throttle, you have to concentrate absolutely a hundred percent, especially if you're going through a few gears. Yeah, yeah. Where you go in, uh, in the right direction, a hundred percent of your concentration is on that. Whereas this, obviously, it's nowhere near the acceleration rate of uh, a modern yeah, one-liter yeah. bike, but it is quick. Yeah, it's quick. But you've got available capacity to listen to the exhaust and enjoy it at the same time as accelerating yeah. and take in the induction roar and everything else yeah. uh, at the same time and there's something special about enjoying that level of performance yeah. Uh, yeah. just as much as one litre bikes. Exactly, it's, it's, a, it's a symphony of sound I think I called it, <laughs> no, especially with you in front as well, I mean, you can, can hear yours as well, I mean I'd love to have been by the side of the road and, and heard them come past on in that power band you know. And every time you look in the mirror, you see a, a plume of like blue haze, don't you? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's incredible. I do love a two-stroke and that for me is, I think the ultimate two-stroke. <laughs> this is much better than I was expecting it to be. I thought I'd get on this and be like, yeah, sounds nice, but it's absolutely horrible to ride. It's not, it's really not bad at all. I say if I had a little bit more braking power, I'd be over the moon. Whoa. I'm not going to try and find neutral. It's amazing. It's incredible. I love it. Sit it at 5k. set before the corner. Uh, I could definitely see myself owning one of these. It's not just all about the noise. It doesn't handle bad either, you know. The whole experience of riding it is brilliant. Really, really good. It's great following Mike because I can just smell his bike. It smells lovely. I'm going to stink for weeks. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to wash this kit. I'm going to leave this kit sealed in a glass cabinet just to open occasionally and just smell it. It goes round all right. I guess you'd run out of tyre fairly quickly if you start really laying it over because the tyres are so thin. This is a beautiful road down there. <laughs> oh, what a day. What a day. Let's have a little bit of a walk around. It seems wrong not to come and come out on these bikes and not do a walk around like I would normally. So Talk us through a few things with the with the uh, Skull Bandit one then, Mike. So it's got a different Metch Mac swinging arm, and that's just to stabilise the bike a bit stiffer, a bit of extra stability. Yeah, combined with a aftermarket rear shock, it just tightens up the back end a bit, makes it handle a bit better. Uh, you'll notice the difference on the Pepsi. It's a standard swing arm. So, okay, so that's um, got standard forks, and it needs that okay, yeah. steering damper that it's got fitted. So it's all oh, right. So you've got the damper on here because yeah, I didn't notice that one getting getting lively or anything. So no, it behaves itself. This one, the Pepsi is <laughs> like a horse that wants to jump sideways. So these are those brakes which were giving me a bit of trouble. And this one's actually got the better brakes. You say? Yeah, they, this, this these has got brakes. New are, pads, new discs. Yeah, those brakes are ten times better than that one. We're going to have worse brakes on the Pepsi. They, they are carryover GSXR 750 of the day. Are they? Oh, uh, okay. Um, out the parts bin. Yeah. What do you call the engine? I can't remember now. What did you say? The. Uh... Well, it's a square four. A square four. That was it. I but the remember. front two cylinders are lower. Uh, the upper two cylinders just sit a bit higher. 
it all looks a bit of a mess under there because when you start adding up the cables you've got one throttle pull but that splits in a junction to four gar carburetors and one oil pump and if yeah. you see the oil pump when i open the throttle yeah. there there's a carb pull yeah there we go and that's the oil pump four carburetor throttle pulls one junction off to the oil pump two choke cables four power valve cables that's why it all looks so sort of like spaghetti junction underneath. So your carbs are bored out. Did you say the carbs as part of the tuning? It's five seven five. Obviously, some porting and stuff gone on as well as there. Yeah. Oh, you then start off five seven two. Five seven two. Five I'm, seven two. And if you can see that. My attention to detail. It's even got yeah. <laughs> stamped I'm, onto the cylinder. I re-stamped it. Has your logbook is updated? Uh, no. <laughs> and then the carbs bored out. Carbs, did you say? Yeah, so Mark at Performance Fabrication that does the tuning work, he's got a, a tune worked out because it's all interlinked. You know, the expansion chamber is linked with the, the carburetor in terms of the tuned process. So he's got some tuning, big boring that he does on the carburetor. Um, then he's got his tuning work on barrel cylinder heads. Yeah. And those are his own expansion chambers. Oh, really? So he makes these. These are, these are designed by him, custom exhaust. And fabricated by him, yeah. His oh, really? fabrication wow, is that. really nice. You can see on the reverse cylinder there, the welds. Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Oh, performance fabrications, I see the label there. What a day. What a day. Can't thank you enough. I've, uh, you know, they say they say you should never meet your heroes, but I think in this instance, I'm even more in love and in awe than what I was before it turned up. Which one do you think? The bike's then? not bad either. <laughs> <laughs> Fizzy drink or chewing tobacco? Uh, oh, that's, that's the ultimate question, isn't it? I think the gearbox on that, you can tell, can't you? It's, it's slightly nice to change. The clutch feels lighter. But I don't know, I like how the bike rides with this swinging arm. Oh, it though. makes a difference. It really it? makes a difference. A couple of times, as we, I know we're getting a bit quicker to, I mean, we went on that, the speeds were getting a little bit higher. And that, I did get myself with a few knots on that a couple of times. It's quite bumpy, some of those roads, aren't they? And I was like, whoa, whoa. Whereas this, I didn't get that on this. It seemed much more dynamically stable, perhaps. But, but the pure sound, the, no, you know, the excitement, the, the, the way the power is delivered, it's just, it's incredible, isn't it? I can see why you love them. Good bit of fun, aren't they? Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I can't thank you enough because it really is, it's bucket list, bucket list stuff for me, honestly. It's, it's a uh, proper special moment. Well, it's good to see them used by someone that appreciates yeah. them because I mean, the, the prices that these are going for is insane, really. Yeah. Um, you can't really justify they're worth it. And what that's doing is just keeping them out of the reach of enthusiasts that just want to experience a big CC2 yeah. stroke. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was actually, after our Cadwell day, I retired to eBay like you do and started, and you're talking sort of 17 grand up to 25, aren't you, for, for one of these now, which is, you know, an insane amount of money, isn't it? It's an insane amount of money. But that's a standard bike. Now, if we had a standard bike here today and you rode that, Meet yeah. your heroes, you'd probably be <laughs> probably walking away be. from it thinking, yeah, perhaps mm, our best. That's, that's very true. That, that is very true. It's only when they're modded up. That so, so that's what you said, I've got to spend 20 grand and then throw another seven, eight grand at it to get it like one of these. I don't know. One thing Mike has just wheeled out is an incredible special build. Isn't it? I'll, I'll chuck a little bit of video up on the screen while we're talking about it. Uh, have a look at this. What's that being used for, Mike? Why are you building that when you've got so many RGs already? How many do you need? <laughs> you can never have enough RGs. <laughs> uh, that's a Martec uh, chassis, uh, sort of like Olin's gas front end, uh, carbon wheels. You know, it's supposed to be sort of Moto 2 GP spec. Yeah. Uh, the chassis accepts a 500 motor. Um, it's got a slave motor in at the moment just to be able to build the pipes. Right, into just it. to, yeah, yeah, the, makes the sense. The pipes are now built. so. We've got a motor ready to go in that, and that's going to turn into a bit of a, a petrol revolt uh, bike for Danny. Oh, I see. So that's going to be a, a bit of a special for your track day endeavours that Danny was talking about. Yes, yeah, so the idea for that bike is to sort of create the most sort of modern day uh, tribute to a GP bike. A bit like the Stutter 500 they that's, built, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, a bit like that, but, but better. 
a lot less money as well. Yeah, a lot less money, yeah. Uh, their engine's going to be more powerful than ours because yeah, of yeah. the technology in their motor, whereas the motor for that is based off an RG500. Yeah. Again, Mark has built the motor for that. It should be 140 horsepower spec. And the idea with that is that we're going to build that bike and then we can retrace some of Danny's footsteps where he's ridden the KRJR uh, RGV 500 yeah. and also uh, the 34 Schwantz bike and in parade laps where he's ridden that we can look at some times of those bikes and see what our see what it can do modern in day interpretation oh, got fantastic. to. Fantastic. But it is for our own sort of track days which in petrol revolt is what we're all about. Well, if you haven't checked it out already, I'll put a link in the description to Mike's channel. So click on that. The con the con I've gone through most of your videos. I'd say they're quite a young YouTube channel, but great production quality. Um, yourself and Danny are great on there. So if you haven't checked out already, click on the link. There's a whole series on the RG500s, the history, you know, from the Sheen, Sheen era, you know, up to the, the latest bikes and out on the road. So uh, definitely worth checking out. Really appreciate you letting me ride these, Mike. As I say, it's a dream come true. It really is. So that's absolutely well, I'm, fantastic. I'm glad you're finishing off still uh, liking them because oh. I thought it was going to be a case of don't meet your heroes. But <laughs> yeah, you're saying not. complimentary things about I, them. I so love it. it. I, mean, I will be checking out eBay once more when I get home and thinking, oh, do I need an H2? Do I want something a bit more classic? <laughs> but thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. See you next time.